On today's show, we take to the field with Vikings head coach Mike Zimmer. No football today, he's after turkeys. Turns out their coach's other big passion. It's like kickoff. Look in this one. We meet a Minnesotan making a difference, Arnie the Wood Duck Man. And the business of fishing baits poured in this angler's garage. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Bill and I welcome you to the show. Up first, a story about one of Minnesota's biggest names in sport. Coach Mike Zimmer bleeds purple and gold. That is until hunting season rolls around. Travis Frank gets the scoop on Coach Zimmer's second love. On the sidelines of Minnesota's most popular football field, Minnesota Vikings head coach Mike Zimmer teaches with passion. Get out of the cut, get out of the cut. That's a lot, that's a lot. His love for the game and brutal honesty are qualities that his players respect. Time out. Good job. When he's not under football field spotlights, coach Zimmer finds peace in a different field. On a calm spring morning, 30 miles west of Minneapolis traffic jams, we hunker down in a turkey blind I built from twigs. I like the challenge of it, of being able to call a turkey and he comes to you. Turkey talker Ron Shera fills out our hunting team. 30 yards behind us, he scratches his slate. Mimicking the sounds of hens, we bring roosting gobblers to life. It's really cool when you can sit there and the sun's coming up and the hens are yelping and the toms are gobbling and I mean, the excitement of everything. Our excitement peaks when a strutting tom finally hits the ground. You know, your heart starts to pump a little bit, start to get a little bit more excited, and eyes get bigger. And that's like, all right, here we go. It's like kickoff. In this game, a wild, love-struck bird has full control. It's a nervous anticipation. You know, you don't know what's going to happen, but, you know, you have your plan. You need to come a little closer. Much to our surprise, we get a front row view into the, uh, <laughs> miracle of nature. The best turkey caller in the world won't convince that Tom to leave his hen. But you know, that's, that's the fun part about hunting anticipation of them coming in and then they go the other direction and you have to see if you can find them. All right, so here's the property. Like the game of football, Coach Zimmer knows that turkey hunting is a constant chess match. Okay. I think that, I think that's <laughs> gonna be our best game plan. Well, my dad was a high school football coach, so that was always in my life, but um, hunting started really early, uh, probably nine, 10. Zim's love for the outdoors has followed him down the winding path of an NFL football coach. A long time ago, I wrote down, you know, some goals that I wanted to do, and I always wanted to own a ranch. I wanted to have a place that looked like a lodge. In the hills of Kentucky, he made that dream a reality. Initially, I bought 40 acres, and then I bought another 40, and then I bought another 80, and then I built a house on it. He named it Zimmer Ridge Ranch. I've been doing a lot of stuff for habitat, uh, for wildlife, um, trying to grow the deer and, and um, 
the turkeys and the quail. And I was just named uh, Kentucky Landowner of the Year by the DNR in the state of Kentucky, so it was kind of cool. That same year, a detached retina in his right eye threatened his view of the outdoors. Initially, I had a torn retina, and then it became detached. I can't bow hunt anymore because I can't see the pin. Really, I've switched left-handed with everything. Quietly leaning against a tall oak, he chooses only to look ahead. Turkey or not, today promises to be unforgettable. Well, we have the draft tonight. Zim makes turkey hunting his annual draft day tradition. Well, the draft doesn't start till eight o'clock Eastern, so I have, unusually, I have a morning off. A bird in hand would surely look good next to his first round draft pick. When I get back to work tonight at the draft, everybody's gonna say, did you get a turkey? And I'm gonna say, no, I didn't get one. But, but, I, but I, I'll say I had a lot of fun. Thanks to Love Struck Gobblers, bragging rights will have to wait another year. Coming up next, we meet a longtime Minnesotan making a difference. Arnie takes the title as the Wood Duck Man. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. By the Yard Maintenance-Free Outdoor Furniture. Running Aces Casino Hotel and Racetrack. And by Aluma Craft Boats. Minnesotans Making a Difference, brought to you by the Partners Group in Wyzetta. Over three generations of unmatched service. Up next, Ron Shera meets Arnie, an absolute wood duck nut and a Minnesotan making a difference. It's Beethoven night with the Mankato Symphony. Diane Pope conducting. And over there in the second violin section and looking quite dapper is 72 year old Arnold Kruger playing as he has for a half century. He's just wonderfully gifted musically, a great violinist. He's an absolute professional. When I'm playing, I try not to think of things outside of the music, especially if I'm thinking of duck hunting or ducks or something like that. Beethoven's Ninth mixed with a fetish for ducks? That's the world of Arnie Kruger. Well, I started putting wood duck cows about, well, it's about 25 years ago. And now Arnie has wood duck boxes hanging everywhere including the walls of his house, the back porch, the trellis, even under the TV satellite dish. Each duck house is numbered, and once a week, Arnie checks to see who's at home. She's looking right at me. I keep track on, this is our site here, and each house has a number and then on each side, inside of each house, it shows how many eggs are in the house at the time I check them. And if it's yellow, that means the duck is in there and she's incubating on whatever eggs are in there. So Number 41, huh? 41, yeah. There were, there were uh, eggs in here. And she's in there, too. Oh, is she? No, yeah. No, yeah. Oh, there she is. Oh, she's looking right at me. Oh, yeah. Let's look in this one. Do you see? She's She's got her down ready and has covered up her eggs. So it goes, box after box, 47 inspections, 47 reports. Harney says he'll stop when he's reached 50 wood duck boxes, the same number of years he's been married to Erlis, his piano playing sweetheart. Ready, play. She knows what direction I'm gonna go and I know what direction she's gonna go. And they both know what's a high note at the dinner table. I cook two ducks. One's a mallard, one's a wood duck. I put bacon on there to give them a little extra juice. For me, it's the best there is. A lot of things that you eat, you love. Arnold's small farm has been developed with ponds for ducks of all kinds. Yes. It, well, it's, I'm selfish, too. It makes me feel good, but I'm selfish with 
But the idea that uh, it's just that I just enjoy ducks and I enjoy watching them come and go. Beethoven's notes may pour from his violin, but Arnold Kruger long ago composed his own song of life. Three important things in my life. First, I say my wife and family, then music, then ducks. Closed captioning is brought to you by Maple Grove Lock and Safe, your premier Liberty safe dealer. Up next, a local angler thinks he might have the secret to spring fishing success. So much so that Tim Matheson turned his hobby into something much bigger. Plastics, one of fishing's single most popular baits. Thing is, not many people in the northern United States make them. Exactly why Tim Matheson created his niche and a nickname. My buddies call me Mr. Plastic. I get people going at the gas station, aren't you that plastic guy? Oh, we're Prescott Bait Company. We make custom colored panfish plastics and custom walleye, paddle tails, curly tail flukes, flukes. An after hours homespun hobby born out of Tim's longtime love of fishing. I felt sorry for people at the boat launch. Oh, we only caught a couple and I'm like, what? You know, and I don't want to brag or anything, but you know, I caught like 50 and I got my limit. Bragging rights eventually led to selling baits. The entire business begins with liquid plastic. This is the Plastisol. It's white like milk, but you don't want to put it on your cereal. Tim adds just the right amount of color and flash from memory. That's actually heat resistant glitter. They sure do like this color. A lot of guys use Presto pots and hot plates and all that to cook their plastics, but microwave's the way to go. Except for the stealing part. Well, yeah, that's, you don't want to be using the wife's microwave in the kitchen, you know, where she's going to be cooking her, her meals or a hot pocket or something. He was given my microwave because I wanted a new one. <laughs> step, the molds. He fills each mold with piping hot plastic, right to the top. The finished products pop right out of the mold. Tim now needs to complete one last step. He coats finished baits in a secret and fishy sauce. The sauce kind of covers up the scent of the plastic, adds a little more fish attractant to it, and a lot of people say it smells like Jägermeister. <laughs> when Tim finally finds time to fish, <laughs> he's not afraid to use the extras. This is like fresh donuts. Yeah, those are really fresh. Here's why. There's a good fish. You're gonna feel it right down to your knees. <laughs> Funny when you get on them, right? Bill Sauger, male. And this is a big Sauger. Bill's got a trophy. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? Exactly why Tim plans to keep on making more baits. And I really can't back out of it now, so now I got too many customers that want my baits. It's, it's the dream. I'm living the dream.
Up next, bird lovers wake up before the sun. They hope to catch a peek of a curious spring dance. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Connecticut. Mountain Dew, Radco Truck Accessories, Bent Creek Golf Course, and by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. Up next, it's time for a story about a Minnesota bird that needs our help. Travis Frank takes a peek at our prairie bird and the work to keep Sharpies alive and well. Long before sunlight fills the morning sky, Lindsay Chartel and Jody Provost get to work. They enter through here. With their trap set on a sharp-tailed grouse mating ground, they climb into their pop-up blind and wait for spring's magic to unfold. Slowly, light filters in, and the show begins. Male sharp-tailed grouse come to this Aiken County field each spring. They come to dance. Then, when the time is just right, hens follow them. They watch their moves and choose their mate. And what they will do is they will put their tail feathers up and shake them and rattle them. They will be stomping their feet. They'll be inflating their air sacs and making noises with them. It's a tradition as old as Minnesota's prairie, a tradition threatened by today's changing landscape. Their primary habitat is brushland habitat which is wide open spaces like you see around you with just scattered. They are listed as what we call a species of greatest conservation need, meaning that they are threatened and their populations are declining. We feel it's probably because of loss and degradation to habitat. Exactly why Lindsay and Jody have come. Uh, we have traps set up on the dancing ground, focusing on catching hens and radio collaring them to track them throughout the breeding season. We want to improve habitat management for the birds. In order to do that, we need to know what they like. What are they selecting for when they're choosing a spot for their nest? Where are they wintering at? And then what's their survival rate? All of this data is part of a three-year study. Minnesota's DNR hopes to use it to create better sharp-tailed grouse habitat. Aiken County is blessed with some really good brushland habitat one of few areas still remaining in Minnesota today. It does take a lot of patience. We spend mornings in the blind from early April through mid-May. From their blind, they watch nature's beauty unfold. There's a lot to observe. And the harsh reality that often comes with it. all part of that natural cycle. Despite the goshawk being out in the field, the sharp tails still returned and went about their dancing again. This time, the hens don't follow. We caught a couple males in the traps and they found their way out. As the morning wears on, the dancing grounds go quiet. The traps sit empty and the study goes on hold. Well, yeah, it's disappointing to not catch any and then to lose one. Losing one, all the more reason to push on. To restore this habitat means others may enjoy this magnificent dance for generations to come. Spring lect viewing has certainly caught on these days. It certainly has, and the more people who watch and appreciate it, hopefully the more will be interested in protecting the bird and its habitat. Sounds about right. Well, that about does it for us. We'll see you back here next week. In the meantime, don't forget to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433.
get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.